And we're back with another episode. All right, you ready? <sighs> yep, I'm ready. I hope you know this is going in our book room. We'll <laughs> no. probably be released tomorrow so people can know what you sound like when you're trying to get ready to record. That's Jesus. me getting ready. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back, y'all. It's just the two of us today. You're just the two of us. <laughs> we can make it if we try. Just, just the two of us. Just the two of us. You sound really good. Just the two of us. You know? Is that another, another course? <laughs> <laughs> Is that another chorus or something? Um, I don't know that part. Isn't there a remix of it? Possibly. Am I singing the Will Smith remix? I was going to say. Just the two of us. Okay, anyway. Welcome welcome back back (laughs) to our podcast. It's me, her, and you. You know. Me, her, and they, them. They, them, us. Just your favorite people on the internet. Absolutely. And we're excited to have you back to be coming into your little ear holes. Just burrowing our way in. I cannot. We're how was, excited. How was your week this past week? My week. Yeah, the one that was last week. <laughs> okay. You don't have a job where you see people every day anymore, but let me remind you of how it feels. You know okay. when you're like walking down the halls and you do because like at our at the hospital I used to work at the hospital I work at. Mm-hmm. There was this always this big emphasis on like when you're ten feet from someone, you need to make like a eye contact, eye contact, like, or like a yeah. what is it called like. What the fuck Five, is that six, called? Seven, seven eight. Eight, and one, two, three, body language. Yes. Like something with your body language that's welcoming to the person. And then when they're five feet from you, you need to make something verbal. Like, hi, hello, good morning, how are you? Right. So everyone's always fucking talking to each other. So first of all, all of that has just decreased everybody's burned exponentially because everyone's burned out. But now it's like, hi, good morning, hey, how are you? I'm here. That's what you get yeah. all the time. Oh, we, even though I don't see patients every day, I, I have the same thing with my coworkers. It's just like, we, we'll type on Teams. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it used to be like a making it. Let's get almost to the week. Like things yeah. like that. And now it's just like a mm, grunts is what I'm getting. Yeah. And this week everyone was grunting. Um, so it was a, it was just everyone's over it. I told you I told that guy in the elevator that he should have let it hit him so that he could get an FMLA because that's how comfortable I am with people now in the hospital. No. What did he say? The elevators were shut and closing and I was the only one in the elevator and this man like runs. And our elevators are so old and rude. Yeah. And they will literally come six, like six centimeters from you before they. They'll cut you off. They will hit. They do not give a shit. So this elevator almost hits this man. And I was like, oh my goodness. He was like, oh, it almost got me. And deadpan. I was just like, sir, you should have let it. That's at least two weeks of FMLA. I would have let it hit me. Like He was like, actually, I just got back. I fell down a flight of stairs. Got a oh subdural hematoma. Lost complete movement of the right side of my body. Had to learn to rewalk again. And I was down in rehab for about two weeks. And this is my third week back. I'm so happy to be here. And I was like, ugh. You were just like, I hate people. Just like, I was like, great. Miracles happen for some of us. Read the room and like. I'm obviously having a horrible day. It's a joke, dude. Like, you, I don't want to know your whole Yeah, life. don't make me feel like shit because I made a lighthearted joke about self-harm. Oh, my God. So that's, that was literally exactly how my week went. <laughs> that seems like a horrible week, by the way. Yeah. It oh just was one God. of those weeks that dragged on forever. And, um. No one wanted to be there. The mood was weird. The vibes were off. But patients and employees. Patients and employees. Yeah. But Mercury has now gone direct. It's out of retrograde. So I'm excited. Okay. I think things are going to be a little perkier. Well, good. I hope yeah. so. How's your week? Um, uh, My week was pretty much the same as yours. It was extremely busy. Y'all, I've had one of the busiest weeks that I've had in a well, very long good. time. No. No? No. Busy means quick. No. It was... Oh, God. It's just so much. So many things to do. But anyway, um, it was a really challenging week um to say the least not challenging it was just busy it was just really really busy but yeah like you said i could tell that something was going on because y'all i sound like a man because i just woke up from a nap so just deal she with just it sounds anyway, like that i can't like you know increase my octave right i'm now. sorry i sound like a man right now just good morning to you um that's yeah just, babes that's just that's just what it is <laughs> listen i'm right. getting my remy ma and my tony braxton and my glorilla on so i'm cool with it anyway um those are all women with deep voices anywho and miss pat too has a deep voice anywho <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we finished the week though with a really good, uh, some really good times. One of my really good friends, she's like, she is my sister. Um, she just is your friend. Oh, I thought you were talking about Queen. (laughs) No, I'm not even talking about her yet. I was about to be like, okay, fuck me then. Right. 
Okay, I'm here. Definitely, but no. I'm here with you. <laughs> Continue your conversation. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah, one of my one of my sisters basically, um, we've been friends since high school, and she came up for a conference. Shouts out to Crystal, um, love you, girl. You're What's amazing. up, Crystal? And so we got a chance to to hang out for a little bit. We haven't seen each other in like two years because, of course, that's crazy. She lives in a different state. Um, she's a nurse, and um, so she was you know dealing with her COVID stuff in her state. I'm dealing with my COVID stuff in my state, and then um. We went to uh, Houston to go see Cointa. I know y'all hear us talk about Cointa all the time. Cointa. And she's having Co a baby. A frick she's the cutest pregnant lady I've ever seen. Yeah. I'm glad that she finally learned how to like just go to work and do her job and get the fuck out. Yeah. She's like one of the hardest working people. And I'm like, why? Why? Just don't. <laughs> no, there's no point. You know those people it. that give like 110% all the time and you're sitting there like, you know, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Even at times, I'm, she was just like, yeah, I'm going to go pick up another patient. I'm like, goodbye. No, I'm going to leave you not. up there. And then she's like, dude, why didn't you come with me? Because, <laughs> because I told you to stop being an overachiever. It's annoying. Yeah. But, yes, yeah, so we, we took a road trip. Never um, again. Listen, y'all, let me tell you something. There Never is a, again will I voluntarily put myself in a car with her for more than 30 minutes. Listen, when this show uh, gets picked up by a national network or, you know, Here's what we're not going to do. We're never going to travel together in a we're car. We're not tour bus people. Yeah. we. I am a tour bus person. I love do, doing I stuff like that. I will fly and meet you there. Here's the problem with Alyssa. Alyssa has never taken a road trip with her friends from college. No. And so her life is very different. I know we talk about our differences, you know, the fact that we're 10 years apart and all that kind of stuff. It showed in this car. This girl, First of all, she hopped her ass in the front seat, okay? <laughs> no, I was forced into the front seat well i didn't see that part i just know i got in the car and you were in the front seat oh, well, and i was that's like true who the fuck put this bitch in the front seat <laughs> then she literally we're on we she's like i gotta get coffee we go I to starbucks it was 10 o'clock in the morning it was 11 it was 11 o'clock that's coffee time so we go to starbucks we get stuff and i'm like this is how i know she's never taken a road trip because who gets coffee to go sit in a car for three hours you're gonna have to pee at some point no, I you're gonna not. be hyped up on sugar and whatnot so then we get like an hour into our trip not even probably not even an hour 30 minutes she's like how long have we been driving i was like bitch you gonna have to get in the back with all of that it it's just a, seemed very long because y'all state is boring yeah that's the true. state of texas is it's boring just, to drive through. it takes fucking forever to drive through texas yeah if you've ever had to drive like we're in san antonio which is pretty south yeah. i remember driving to colorado you cut through that whole this whole ass state it is the longest trip of your life yeah, see, Florida is a long, I mean, it takes eight hours to go from top to bottom of Florida, but when we would take six-hour drives from Tallahassee to Fort Lauderdale, it honestly didn't seem that long because the scenery is so mm. beautiful. Like, you have at least billboards. Texas ain't got no billboards nowhere. And I'm like, what kind of- We got constables and state patrol. That's it. That's all you're doing that's is looking better. out for people. And it's the, I mean, even the trees are ugly. It's just not, it's not the zhuzh. I don't like it. It's The best thing about Texas is the sunsets, and that only happens once a day, so- <laughs> If thank you're not God. if you're not driving during that time, thank God it only happens. Yeah. No, we're not. I've never been a road trip person. I'm a plane really? person. I love the airport. It's my favorite thing. Get there an hour early, buy a book, get a coffee, sit down, maybe a glass of wine. People watch, meet some new people, have some conversation. You're in the air. You're just sleeping or watching a show or doing whatever, and then you're at your destination. Give me a Winnebago, a Sprinter van, a minivan. Hell no. A, a Chevy Tahoe. No. I will. I love road tripping. Why? Love. You're stuck. Oh my because, God. Because you're you know stuck. why? The biggest difference is because. I am a millennial, and because when I was born in the there early planes 80s, when no, you were born? there were planes, but like my my dad is from the backwoods of Georgia, and so every year we took a trip, a family trip to Georgia. It was nine hours in whatever car he rented at the time, and we used to have our Walkmans with our batteries. When Game Boys came out, that was amazing. But before all of that, you just had to sit in the car with your parents, coloring books and shit. So it was boring. So you learned how to just sit your ass down for hours at a time. But y'all the way my just, ADHD works. It's just yeah. not no. Well, y'all Gen Zers, y'all don't take y'all parents probably didn't take y'all on road trips anymore. Everything is so convenient now. Yeah. And ease of access. So that's why y'all have a hard time just sitting there and focusing. Like I if I'm by myself in a car, I can drive. Well, yeah, you have no choice because you're by yourself. That is, that is true. <laughs> Put on a podcast, whatever, and I'll make it there. But other people I'm like, I won't go to sleep. Well, I can listen to podcasts on the way there. I can't do that shit at night. At night, because you see the kind of music I was listening to last Yo, night. Yo, when I tell you I've never heard kevin gates bump so hard 
in such a quiet car. I love you, Kevin Gates. I love you. I, love I your was music. like, this seems excessive for what we're doing. We're just having no, a chill time here. Because I'm so used to listening to like, I need a lot of bass and And not bump. even like, I want to paint y'all a picture. Have, has anyone seen those like TikTok, <laughs> Facebook videos of the people that do the spin class, but it's like the black guy who runs yeah. the spin class and they're on the bike like pumping up and down, <laughs> listen to this trap music. That's her in the car. Listen to Kevin Gates. And I was like, you need to calm it down. It was amazing. That, but that was the only way we we're going to get back safely to San Antonio. Uh huh. Anyway, all that to say, no, I'm not a <laughs> yeah, no road she, trip girl. I'm not an Airbnb girl. So if that makes me bougie, why, why I don't not? Care. What's wrong with Airbnb? Fuck Airbnb. I'd rather be in a hotel. Give me a hotel. Well, that's true. Continental breakfast. That's very true. I love. I, breakfast. I just I need. I don't want to have to figure know what out. It's like a box of chocolates. You never know literally what exactly. you're going to get. Exactly. I don't want to have to. Ooh, they gross me out. This yeah. is not to say that Airbnbs are bad, and I have stayed in a lot of Airbnbs. But if yeah. it was my choice, we go to a hotel mm-hmm. where there's turn down service. And you just walk, I can go to the front desk and get everything that I need. I don't have to figure out where the fucking plugs are that don't work or yeah. how to get my key from some. I'm not doing all that shit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to fly my ass and I'm going to get out of the plane. I'm going to go to a hotel. Yeah, see it out. Thank I, you. I, I, on the other hand, I'm like, you know what? Let's have an extra day to travel there, then have an extra day to travel back. No. I love road trips. We cannot take this show on the road. Yeah, well, we can, but I'll we meet can, you but there. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll fly just, there. Yeah, I'll just have to meet you there. Well, in other things, I'll tell you what's uh, what's pretty fly about the month pretty of October. Pretty fly for a white guy. Yeah. What song other is than, that? Um, Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis. No, there's another. All the girls say I'm pretty fly for it. doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't anyway, matter. Yeah. Sorry. You interrupted me. I know. Uh, I know. So part? what else is fly is <laughs> for the month of October, other than Halloween, is the fact that it is PT Month. <laughs> national PT Month, y'all. It's National Physical Therapy Month. PT. PT. Woo-hoo. I'm PT half the, half the year. Why only half? Because PT. I only get called PT about 50% of the time. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. That's better than 100%. I know. Or what do you, I was there, say, you get called nurse the other half? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> my, P- PT. my PT nurse. Yeah, your PT nurse. I hate when people say that. So it is National Physical Therapy Month, y'all. So if you see a physical therapist, hug a physical therapist, take them to lunch, pay their student loans off, thank them, understand that they are sacrificing their bodies for you people. Yes, I said Truly. you people, and we don't have to do that because our return on investment is horrible, and we were all duped and manipulated into going into this profession, and we all regret it. Anyway, I'm neither My question is, it's not really a question, it's more of a statement. Okay. Why physical therapists and just therapists in the hospital are mm-hmm. so underappreciated? Your cute therapist gets nothing from you people. Nothing. As soon as your ass goes to inpatient rehab, you're bringing them cookies and snacks and gift cards. As soon as you go to outpatient for a couple weeks, you make this relationship. You're bringing those motherfuckers, you know, bottles of wine and lamps that you've had forever that you think they might be interested in and recommendations for things. I don't get any of that. Yeah, we don't. No. And I mean, and the thing is, we honestly like and I'm not I am tooting our own horns. We save a lot of lives in the hospital. We bring y'all back from the depths. Because like, and, and, the only way you're going to get to inpatient rehab or to an outpatient is by us saving your life. I mean, yes, the doctors and nurses do a lot, but we honestly save your life. Quality of life, for sure. We definitely give you back your quality of life, and we are so underappreciated. But that's fine. We but chose fine. this profession. Hey. It's just like teachers. They chose the profession, and we went in, and, and you know, hopefully somebody will make a show about uh, physical and occupational therapists, and we'll be a part of it. Oh, that would program. be cool, like a 600-pound um, life, but for therapy. Um, I would like it more like Scrubs or like House. Okay. Yeah. I can see where you're going So we with can that. be very, like, I would like a, like a, a mockumentary. Okay. I think that'll be What funny. if it was like a housewife situation? No. No? Mock- we're sticking mockumentary. Mockumentary. Absolutely. Because we can get away with a lot more stuff. That's true. Yeah. And just say, oh, no. Like Blair stupid. Witch. Okay. Yeah. Not that gruesome, no. But. Also, speaking of Blair Witch, happy spooky season. Spoopy or spooky? Oh, I love a spoopy. I know. You introduced me to spoopy. I last love a spoops. Year. Yeah. I didn't know what the heck spoopy was. What are you doing for your spoopy PT month? Um, continuing to be underappreciated. There it is. <laughs> That's about Someone's it. Someone's gotta do it. I mean, yeah, no, I don't think nobody cares. I don't even care anymore. Uh <laughs> I'm just doing it for the other PTs. So anyway, all PTs, all Congratulations, physical therapists out there. Everybody. I hope, phys- and yeah. physical therapists, um assistants. physical therapy assistants as well as rehab techs who work on the physical therapy side. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope your job well. is doing something very nice for you. 
And not a pizza party. It's probably a pizza party. Monetarily. Also, too, y'all, it is October the 1st. Is it not? Second. Yep. It's October the 2nd. This is also National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, Last year, we had an episode called Check Your Boobies. Go and listen to that. Make sure that you are getting your breast exams, that you are doing your self-breast exams, getting your mammograms, all that stuff. This year, actually, oh, it passed. I forgot it. Oops. My bad. Uh, t- this year was my mom's 12th year uh, survivorsary. Um, ah, she's a breast cancer survivor. And, um, I'm yeah. a survivor. I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm not, not going to stop. stop what? I'm, I'm going to work harder. Man, that, was, that song was still is a fucking bop. Yeah, definitely is. But, yeah, so Breast Cancer Awareness Month, y'all. Uh, make sure that you are donating to uh, all those uh, places uh, to donate to. This is off topic. Yeah. And I am listening to this story. I'm very happy that your mom survived breast cancer. I would hope so. And everyone don't, else don't who ass. <laughs> survived breast cancer. <laughs> but did you know that Survivor song was written about the other girls that they kicked out of Destiny's Child and how they all started talking shit about how Destiny's Child was going to suck and so they made Survivor? Yes. Remember, I, I lived through that. They I, were like my same age. I hear these things and I'm like, well, oh, also... I just want y'all to know how Alyssa turns everything back to her. Yeah, it's really good. I'm over here talking about my mom's life, and you're just like, uh, by the way, Beyonce and them, <laughs> a diss track to the other members. <laughs> I said I was happy that your mom survived breast cancer. What more do you want from me? Oh my um, God. I'm going to send her flowers, and she's going to be like, I don't know who the fuck this is. Like, I'm, like, I'm so sorry. Person? Uh, I was watching Hocus Pocus today, the second one, oh, okay, and which we can talk about later. Yeah. But um, the premise of... But not even the person movie, but they talk in the movie like, oh, the Sanderson sisters came back um, 28 years or 29 years ago. And I was like, that's such the no, it didn't because. And then I was like, oh, I'm yeah, almost did. 30. Yeah. That means that it was 29 years ago. And I, I like vomited. I was disgusted. That's so long ago. OK, how did that tie into breast cancer awareness? I mom? have no idea. <laughs> you just had to get it out. Yes. Y'all, y'all ain't praying for me. All right. Yeah, we, we'll talk about that in the what we are watching. Uh, are we ready to get into the episode today? Yeah, why don't you put me back on I'll track. tell you what we will be watching uh, feb- in February of 2023. Our girl, your girl, Rihanna Fenty. Uh, I don't even know what button I want to. And also. So for her. And movie. also. Bruh. And I don't even know. Rihanna will be performing. Be he- she will be the headlining act for the Super Bowl in 2023. Bad sponsored by back. Apple. Actually, Apple is Apple be sponsoring the um, the uh, Super Bowl this year. It was usually like Pepsi was their big sponsor. Do you think they're going to do something weird like, oh, if you use your Apple Air phone, like your AirPods, to stream this and watch it, you're going to get this more like? There'll be uh, that'll be a great marketing strategy if they did. Yeah, they'd have to do something. It's yeah. from yeah. It's Apple. Music. I'm so excited. I, I mean, I think Rihanna is an amazing uh, performer and an amazing entertainer. I did see this one TikTok this week about this guy. He was saying, you know how they say, uh, what's one unpopular opinion that you have or whatever that'll yeah. get you, not canceled, but just that, that'll cause some controversy. And so this guy came on there and he was talking about how um, he was like, Beyonce is a far better entertainer than she is a singer, which I agree with. I think that's accurate. And then he also said uh, Michael Jackson was the better performer and entertainer, but Prince was the better singer musician. Also accurate. Huh. And then he said, um, "Damn it, who was the last person?" He said, um, "God dang it, it was somebody else." Great, you're crap. I can't remember, but anyway, uh, but that was very true. Um, I'm wondering if her performance is going to be like the Fenty Fashion Show vibe. Have you ever watched that? Would be am- oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I would amazing. love that. Those yeah. are so beautifully like curated and choreographed, and I would really love that. I just think a lot of her shows, like first of all, her culture. You know, she's from Barbados, and I think a lot of the Caribbean culture that she brings into mainstream, um, first of all, is amazing. But also, to being able to bring her businesses into that too. I mean, she's just a great performer. She's a great dancer. Um, notice I didn't say singer necessarily because I don't. She's not a singer. Singer to me personally, she's like. She's like a Shanti, Sierra, Keisha Cole, all of them, and then Monica, all of them in there. It's for a singing. If I hear, what do you think she's gonna sing? She has to do everything. She has to do everything. all our hits. If I hear this, oh na na, come on, it's done. I'm done. I well, yeah, you have to see. She's gonna sing hits. I, she's gonna, everything's gonna be fast though because it's the Super yeah. Bowl, so you can't. And it's gonna be spliced because I think she only has what like seven or eight minutes or ten. Who minutes? do you think she's gonna bring out? You think she's gonna bring out people? Or she's just gonna do herself. She's got to bring someone. No, out. I think she's gonna bring. She's bring out ASAP. She might bring out. ASAP. It's the baby daddy yeah. for me. It'll be funny if she brings out Chris Brown. <gasps> I think that'll be amazing if she did. Whoa, what a bridge. What a gap to bridge. Yeah, I think oh, it'd be amazing if she did I that, would though. die. Stop saying you're going to die. I'm sorry. Please I would. 
You're speaking horrible stuff over yourself. She I should know. bring out Lizzo. I'll tell you why she that should would bring be out a good Lizzo. One. Lizzo this week in the news, uh, she played as she's on tour right now with Big Lot with Big Lotto and somebody <laughs> Big else. Lots. Big Lotto and somebody else. Anyway, so she played Thomas No. James, James Madison's Madison. crystal flute that's in housed in the library of Congress. For over two hundred years. She played the shit out of that. And flute. has never been they said it was never it had never been played, so they didn't know what it sounded like. Mm-hmm. And so she she just showed why she is the shit. Like legit. I love her. I, I love, love Lizzo. Her so much. I, I you know who introduced me to Lizzo, who? actually? You'd be very surprised. Your old supervisor. Really? Yeah. She's great. She's MC. a wealth. Because she kept saying, she was like, have you, have you heard of Lizzo? And I was like, who the fuck is Lizzo? And this was mine when Lizzo first came out. And she was just like, oh my God, she gives me so much life. And I'm Aww. like, what? And I was like, is she just saying it just because it's a black, black artist person. or whatever? <laughs> and so. Uh, She's like, oh, I, I know a black person. I know a You'd black artist. to hear their Exactly. Music. And so she turned me on to it. I've been listening to Lizzo ever since. But um, Lizzo yeah. is just like a very happy artist. Like every yeah. song, you know. I just love everything about her. I love the fact that she spreads so much positivity. Um, not only just body positivity, just positivity in general. She does what she wants to do unapologetic, unapologetically, and I love that about her. And she's an amazing flutist. I mean, is that what it's called? Yeah, flutist. Yeah, flutist. I love that. I love how she incorporates the flute into everything. Yeah. Her and Meg The Stallion for me are just they're like sisters. Love it. They're Sister literally girls. like they're almost like like uh, fraternal twins. I love it. Yeah, they should actually go on tour together. But oh, um, can you imagine? Yeah. Well, speaking of. Um, Lotto. Megan. Well, Megan Lotto. the Stallion. Megan the Stallion. Sorry, segue. Speaking of Megan the Stallion, what were you talking about, Megan the Stallion? Megan the Stallion has launched an amazing, amazing resource. It's basically a directory for mental health resources, like Ooh. therapists and addiction hotlines and all of this stuff. You can find it all in one space and it's called Something about being a bad bitch. Hold bitches on. got bad days. Bad bitches. Bitches have bad days. Is that what it's called? <laughs> no, it's something like that. It's so, I was like, why well, you have a good memory? Let me see. And a five, six, seven, eight, go one. Hold on. I'm finding it. I'm so hungry. I just don't know what I want to eat. Why? You know, you know your food today. I just want to bite into something. That's all. Oh, like, she's about to bite it. Not like Whoa. Jeffrey Dahmer style, but just like. That grosses me out. What? Eating people. Well, that's what your people did. Bad bitches have bad days, too. I told you something about bad bitches. It is. And it's just an online resource. You can go on there. Does it help you find therapists? Yeah. Okay. It helps you access um, links where you can get free therapy groups, helplines, substance, and suicide abuse. All of that shit. Cool beans. That's awesome. What? Use your power for good, ladies exactly. and gents. Also, Ow. did you see... Uh, party's little date night for the two of them that he set up. Oh, I love their I love them I, as a couple. their relationship, and then Carl Anthony Towns and Jordan. I was about to say Sparks. They're super cute. She let Jordan me Woods. I love their relationship. If you ever had to wonder who won out of her in the Kylie situation, yo, Jordan Woods won. Thank you for bringing Kylie up. That was an amazing segue. I need all the people to listen, oh, gather around, God. think very much. Why? Can anyone please tell me? There's a TikTok going around that says that she was looking up all of Kylie's. Um, what is the thing called when you license and you trademark all of Kylie's trademarks. So it's like Kylie, the name is trademark stormy's trademark. And then there's a trademark for someone named Kristen with a K wolf. And remember that we thought her baby was named wolf. And then she took it away. She said, no, he doesn't look like a wolf, but Kristen with it. There's no way she's naming her baby Kristen after the Tristan situation. There's no way. And that's what's trademarked. So I just need anyone out on the internet to tell me, whether or not this is true or false. I'm going to not say anything else. I promise about the Kardashians for the whole episode. I'm going to let that lie. But I would really appreciate for someone to do some investigative work because it will, it will literally, I will be silenced for the rest of the year. If she names her baby, Kristen. you won't, you're a liar. I mean, won't I'm a liar, but are you kidding me? <laughs> you're a horrible liar. That's like, that is insanity. There's no way she would do that. What's wrong with naming her baby, Chris with a K. Kristen is one letter off from Tristan. But it's about her mom, probably. I don't know, man. I don't like it. Well, good thing you're not the mother of the child. <laughs> it w- It's just like, no. Okay. It would be, you could 
No, she's definitely trying to, but I'm just trying to figure out how Tristan has ruined Kylie's life. I'm just like, Tristan is this, he's made your sister's life a living hell. He's cheated on her a billion times. He ain't got nothing to do with Kylie. That's Chloe's dumbass deciding to stay in that bullshit. That's true, but it's your sister, and you're always, oh, I love you, and you're my sister, and that's so messed up of Tristan, yada, yada, yada. You're going to be like baby I, Kristen. That's just like if I married a man who his name was the same name as my dad. I, I can't marry you because you have my same No, but you name. have positive feelings about your dad. Well, yeah. It would be like you were dating this guy and his name was Larry and he beat the shit out of you and you hated him and then you married some guy named Lawrence and he was, his nickname was Jerry or something. Okay. I, I just get, don't I like it. Saying. And I would really like someone to just confirm or deny that information for me. We'll send our investigators Thank out. you. Our you can family. carry on with the list now. All right. Let's get back to some real interesting news. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> shit. I keep forgetting all these things are popping up. Okay. Out. She was engaged to Tristan. Who was engaged to Chloe Tristan? Chloe was engaged to Tristan when all this shit happened. Isn't okay. that insane? That was why she was wearing that big ass rock on her finger and everyone was like, she bought it for herself. She didn't. They were engaged. But what does that and have to do these with Ky- I'm confused. What does that have to do with Kylie? Oh, I'm off of Kylie, but... Would you let me know I'm your co-host? I didn't know we were moving on there. But it's just... God. She's... Man... He's trifling. That's crazy. You, but you're acting like he's not. He's not. He's a human. No, he is. It's just a really shitty thing to do. That you know that happens every day. No, I know. It's just a shit. But like you know, as more and more comes out, and I know they just want to garnish sympathy for her because they want everyone to be on her side. But like the more I find out, I'm just like, damn, this is a really fucked up situation. I think the only thing that's gonna save Chloe is if the they Lord. come out. Well, the Lord obviously, but number two, a strong number two is that they just go ahead and just say she's OJ's daughter. That's it. That's a strong start. Yeah, I think I think it'll actually help. Well, the reason why I wanted to kind of segue back to Big uh, to Big Lotto was because um, I don't know if you've seen like this little girl who's been doing like interviews with Big Lotto or not the interviews with her. I'm sorry, she's been doing interviews with a lot of celebrities. And this little uh, cute little girl, I can't remember her name. Um, I don't know that I brought it up. Um, oh, she's a nine year old fashion influencer. Her name is Taylin Biggs. First of all, Taylin, I think that's a cute name. Taylin Biggs is a cute name. That's like a, yeah, she's going to be famous at some point. With a name Biggs. like Taylin Biggs, like who's, how many Taylins do you know? No, no one. one. That was the first time Zero. I ever heard that. That's the first that. one. You're one of one. Right. So this so this little girl, this nine-year-old fashion influencer, oh, how do you influencer at nine? Anyway, I know. That's crazy. So she basically goes to these award shows and stuff and these places where celebrities are and she interviews them about their style. So Big Lotto was in the, the hot seat, I think, for a very small little snippet. Um, because the little girl asked her, oh, you know, how would you describe your, your style, your fashion? And so Lotto was like, well, I would explain it like, um, you know, bold, sexually liberated. She was like, you'll learn about that when you get older, whatever, whatever. And they went on about the interview. This interview happened like a few weeks ago and then people are just now bringing it back. Cause you know, the, I guess it was in the slow, slow news week or something mm-hmm. like that. And so people were talking about, oh, well that was so inappropriate for Lotto to say that to a nine year old and blah, blah, Where? blah, which I'm just like. Okay, have you listened to Lotto's music? Number two, if you are a parent out there, this is speaking for somebody who's not a parent yet, if you are a parent, stop bringing your children into adult spaces and expecting the adult spaces to accommodate your motherfucking child. Amen. Okay? Lotto was acting like Lotto at a Lotto place. Thank you. She's an adult. Not only that, Lotto, I think, is one of the... Like, first of all, no celebrity should be a role model for your child. I don't care if they, you know, are baking cookies. Bitch, you be your own child's role model. But not only that, my, my thing is this. Like, you as a parent are trying to say, oh, you need to be a role model for my kids. Why? Where? In what world? No. Why is your child listening to anything that Lotto is saying? Also, it's not like she's a lawyer or a doctor or an advocate or, you know. But she is an advocate. She's an advocate for for what? For adult things. But it's not like she's like this big, like, political activist on the front lines. Like, she's making her music and making money and living her life. Y'all don't even want critical race theory taught in schools, which is American history. But then you got a nerd to talk about you want a lot of to be a, a, a influence on your child, a positive. Influence. I remember even when Nicki Minaj, and I'm not even a Nicki, Nicki Minaj fan. But I'm I remember, not a Nicki Minaj fan. No, I'm not. Pull up in the game. Okay, you don't know that. Yeah, no, I don't. Mm, <laughs> we're not even going to go there. God, uh, but the thing is, that. even I remember when she came out and because she was dressed very like Barbie-esque with like a lot of the bright colors, a lot of the kids flocked to her. And I remember even there was these two kids, Sophia and Grace on... Um, uh, what was it? On Ellen. Ellen. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so they were just like, oh, well, will you ever tone down your lyrics? Bitch, no. Why would Nicki, why would you require Nicki Minaj to tone down her lyrics when your children should not be listening to her music? 
And if your children are listening to her music, deal with the consequences. That's that's you as a parent. Like these, like you will never ask me to tone down anything for your raggedy ass child. So yeah, this is just your kids like, are raggedy. I'm just saying this and the JoJo Siwa. That's why it was such a big difference. Do you remember when everyone was pissed off at JoJo Siwa? When she came out as gay. No, when her the card game she made had super weird. Oh shit yeah, in yeah, it. yeah. But yeah. JoJo Siwa was marketed towards children yeah these people aren't they're not they're doing grown woman shit they're not but the thing is even i think lotto is a great example of where she came from like the first of all her both her mom and her dad are very involved in her career i think her dad's her manager or something oh, like wow. that or it didn't like work out for beyonce he, but maybe it'll work out well i mean beyonce wouldn't be where she is without her dad honestly that's but true. i think she outgrew him which was rightfully so okay, but the but thing is you, sorry that's off topic too don't worry Please, please stop bringing things up on to, off topic you're making that episode longer anyway no I'm kidding <laughs> so but I think with Lotto the fact that she was like a child rapper and seeing her career morph into what it is today I think that is very influential and can show any parent like this, this is what happens when you're involved in your child's life and you're not looking for somebody else to raise them or looking for somebody else to influence them but this idea that's again stop bringing your children into adult spaces and expecting adults to then you know, uh, 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 manipulate the situation to accommodate your little child. Also, Take your child home. I don't think the the phrase "sexually liberated" is extremely inappropriate it's to not. tell a nine year old person. She wasn't having a conversation about being sexually liberated. She was trying to find an appropriate way to express that she's sexy as hell. And that's how she wants to dress, and that's how she, that's who she's gonna be. But even too, some of y'all kids be seeing y'all date four and five, seven men at a time. So uh, come on now, like let's not be the, co- the pot calling the kettle a sponge, motherfucker. God damn. Okay, anyway. I'm so sorry to do this to you, but oh, I just Lord, have Jesus. to get it off my Go brain. Ahead. Have you heard all the conspiracies that Kelly Rowland was um, Michael or what is his name, Michael Knowles? Matthew. Matthew knows his love child, and that's why she got preferential treatment in Destiny's Child. No, I thought they that her and Beyonce were cousins or something like that. Well, no, something happened where Miss uh, that uh, Tina Knowles adopted her allegedly or some shit. I don't know. I don't know. I heard that no, she got a whole ass daddy though. I mean, I think he passed away recently, but I don't know. That's no, just what the word I'm not on trying to kill your dad, is. Kelly. I'm not trying to kill, kill your dad. I think did have that. I was heard that Matthew Knowles is very inappropriate with a lot of people. I mean, it, allegedly, allegedly. I mean, makes sense. Yeah. But He's the love child thing threw me. Nah. I was like, that's crazy. I mean, nah. I mean, I haven't heard that, but I mean, I wouldn't put past anything or past anybody. We, hey, here on this podcast, one thing we're not going to do is put anything past anybody. No, definitely not. Um, I'll tell you what needs to be put past uh, somebody. Um, the FBI. Ooh, hoo, hoo, so the federal bureau. What were you telling me about Aretha Franklin this week? The FBI released some files. In of which they released all their information, letting us know that they were tri- basically. Why can't words form today? Did you take your meds today? No, mm. I didn't. Okay. They were spying on. You have to cut this. Okay, let's start over. What were you talking about, Aretha Franklin? <laughs> the FBI was listening into her conversations for over forty years. Mm-hmm. Just to see, I guess, what the hell was going on. They were trying on. to see how involved she was in the civil rights movement. Right. So just for terms like radical and civil rights and all of that mm-hmm. shit. But they released all this information that they had on her. And I'm just thinking 40 years is a long time to be listened into. True. You know, every I conversation. It, I think it's um, I think it's despicable and I think it's deplorable. Because um, my thing is they did the same thing to Mahalia Jackson. They did the same thing to... Uh, uh, Maya Angelou. I mean, if anybody that had any kind of ties to Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X, any of those, you know, prominent civil rights activists, they were, you know, tapping their phones and it was stupid. This is why they always, this is why black, when black people get in, in corporate America spaces and there's more than two black people in a mm-hmm. space, people are just like, what are y'all talking about? You have a meeting? They That's released like, no. 270 pages worth of information. And it was probably, and you just wasted 270 trees because you probably got nothing. Insane. She was probably talking about recipes on how to bake chicken and how to bake, you know, pies and stuff like that. You got nothing. All that tells me is you just never know how influential you are. So live your life. Yeah. Say the things. You never know who it'll impact. You never know if you'll get 
big enough for the FBI to want to track your ass for four years. Well, the years. thing is, we're giving out the information for free now. Everybody that puts everything true. on social media. So I think the FBI uh-huh. has had a, a long break because they're like, wow, you guys are giving us all this information. Even, too, these rappers are giving specific details about the crimes, crimes they're that they're committing. committing, allegedly. And so the FBI, you're doing the FBI's work for them. Have so you seen stop. all those dark web websites where you can put in email addresses of people and it shows you everything that email address is connected to, what it's logged into, literally like anything you'd want to know about someone yeah everything's tied together so shit. the internet is a horrible place to be it's um, a dark place that internet yeah i'll Love tell you it, though i'll tell you what else is a dark place we're just gonna talk about this in the rehab corner of uh, this other part i'm um, sorry i had to move that around uh, i'll tell you what else is a dark place uh brett Favre. and i'm gonna keep talking Never about been it. there I mean, well, I don't want to go there either, but um, Brett Favre. Brett Favre, y'all know, was in the news. We talked about it last week about how he stole, allegedly, um, money from welfare recipients in order to build his daughter's uh, college, a raggedy-ass facility, whatever, and taking a bunch of money and blah, 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 right? So in this week, the consequences are coming out, but everybody's being very quiet, which I think is very suspect. It's kind of flown under the radar. I'd exactly. Say. It's because he's a white male in America. Anyway, so um, his little stupid show or whatever that he has is basically on pause. What I find very interesting about the whole Brett Var situation is how Michael Vick, and I'm going to bring Michael Vick up because I'm going to bring Michael Vick up. Uh, Michael Vick was in the news for allegedly fighting dogs when it actually wasn't him. It was his brother at a house that he owned. And people were like, how dare you? How, you you knew what was going on in your house. Okay, Rachel, Timmy's over here making bombs in your house, okay? He's over here loading up his AR-15 to go out and shoot fucking people. And you got the audacity to say something about Michael Vick and some goddamn dogs? Fuck these dogs. Like, the fact that you would put an animal over human lives is insane to me. But then you don't say anything about people who are homeless who have dogs out there, they have no way to feed them. It's just like the kids who are adopted in foster care. Are you going to take the dogs in? Are you going to take the people in? Like, <laughs> But y'all so qu- y'all had so much shit to say about Michael Vick. I remember Michael, Michael Vick. Vick was such a big thing. And he all anyone huge. ever talked about was the dogs, the dogs, the dogs, the dogs. That man the- did so much for the city of Atlanta, did so much for the Atlanta Falcons, and y'all treated him like pure shit. Mm-hmm. But now Brett Favre did some, he's taken away from human life, from babies. Of dollars. Millions dollars of dollars from ba- ch- women children and babies and y'all are just well you know I-, I think he was a great football player no 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 be just your di- your apology and your humbleness needs to come at be as loud as your disrespect to michael vick Protect if, michael if vick, you don't know saying. the mississippi department of human and something something the welfare program the well human services and nonprofits misappropriated a shit ton of money allegedly Allegedly, millions of they dollars, did. which went to a volleyball stadium mm-hmm. for Brett Favre's, Brett Favre's daughter. daughter. And there were text messages where he asked, can the money be traced back to me? All kinds of shit like that. Mm-mm-mm. Allegedly. But the yeah. NFL is not having a good time this month. But Yeah, and we're, we're going to talk about that actually in uh, the rehab corner. No, look at that. It's probably um, why they have Rihanna fucking doing the Super Bowl. They need some positive press. Well, you know, Jay-Z is over the entertainment portion. That's true. This. And... Which is weird because, as we all know, Rihanna used to have an allegedly an affair with Jay-Z. Okay, why can't we talk about the positive stuff? So she was assigned to Jay-Z at one point, and he was the one who discovered assigned her. Assigned is right. What did I say? Signed. Oh, yeah. I said signed too. to him. You know, I can't. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to. Uh, anyway. He found her and signed her, and then they were having a relationship. Beyonce knew about it, and then that's when she had to go on get That's. That is not the, the, the thoughts and views Allegedly. and opinions of Fleming. That is all And power. the reason they broke off ties with her silently is because she went back to Chris Brown after he beat her, allegedly. That is, I would say, the side of events. That's what I'm saying. Next in the news. Uh, <laughs> the people need to hear this. I don't think the people care because they've been married. they got three kids. That's true. Rihanna's happy with uh, at ASAP Rocky, whatever. The, yeah, ASAP Rocky. At ASAP <laughs> At Rakeem, uh, yeah. Yeah, they, they good. She got a baby. Anyway, um, I'll tell you what is really messed up in the world. Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't say my truth, but you can say shit like that. Because this, this is a fact. This uh, is not, so this is mine. My truth. No, this is a mine fact. are alleged facts. And I'll tell you why I say these Republicans are horrible, because six Republican-led states are actually suing President Biden 
over his student loan forgiveness. Because they're probably like, sir, this is about to fuck up our financials. Exactly. And I'm just like, you pieces of shit. Can so you I'm, let us I'll, live, please? I'll tell you the states. It's the states that nobody even wants to live in anyway. Uh, first one is Iowa. Who the fuck? What's in Iowa? Because, ma'am, if he approves this, that's their whole budget. Oh, well, damn it. They shouldn't have, they should have free schools, I damn like it. I we do this every week, but I can't tell you one place in Iowa. I can't either. Kansas. Kansas. I do know about Kansas, Kansas City. City. Uh, you got a Super Bowl. Y'all got money. Y'all got a no, stadium. That's Missouri. Oh, sorry. Oh, Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs. That's yeah. right. <laughs> See, Mm-mm. I didn't pay attention to your garbage class. That's right. Uh, Missouri, Nebraska, South Carolina, and Arkansas. Yes, I said it. I know it's Arkansas, but I like uh, to say Arkansas. They can go. Does nobody want all them states? I mean, South Carolina, yes, because that was. Is that the Carolina you'd go to if you could pick a Carolina? Hell no, I would go to <laughs> North Carolina, Charlotte specifically. But hell no, I wouldn't go to South Carolina. Fuck man. South Carolina has a lot of, um, it's a beautiful state. It really is. South Carolina has a lot of really traumatic history to a degree for black, for African-Americans, because okay. that's where the Atlantic slave trade kind of came uh. into. So anyway, um, yeah, but, and they're known for their rice. I heard that the, whole, the Carolinas are some of the most segregated places in the U.S. Absolutely. And still, South, to, to me, state. I feel like South is more segregated than North. That's still just, and like, I'm not. And I have family in South Carolina. I'm not and blind North Carolina. to, like, I know racism is still like bumping and alive and well. But the idea that like large places, metropolitan places, can still be just like so heavily segregated because mm-hmm. racism, I feel like, can live amongst everything. You can still be a very racist place, but look mm-hmm. like you're not like you're right, like yeah. you're progressive. Mm-hmm. So that I understand, but yeah. segregation is still crazy to me because I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? Well, because a lot of these, a lot like I'll say for South Carolina, there's a lot of these little small towns that they have like a population of like 200 mm. and the sheriff is the judge and the cashier and the <laughs> mechanic. And so you're not going to, you're not going to change their ways yeah. of doing stuff. And this is why they're so there. All of these States are red. Yeah. So you're not going to change their minds about a lot of stuff. So that's why a lot of uh, states and they're are voting that. against student loan forgiveness. Yeah. They're, they're $10,000 of student loan. They're, forgiveness? They're, su- they're suing him. But you didn't get Pilgrim. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. So they're suing him because they're basically saying that Joe Biden does not have the, um, the uh, the accusing him of overstepping his executive powers. How do, uh, is it mind. overstepping your executive? Pa- executive means executive, sir. The president is the president. But the, nobody cared about all the executive orders that Trump put in place. There though. were a bunch that were cleared. I do remember that. He was like, "My children will have access to all of the classified documents." Executive <laughs> order. No, okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're selling that shit to Russia, allegedly. Anyway, mm. so yeah, um, I'm just glad Texas ain't with that bullshit. Uh, Hook them. Because Beto about to get in there and do some amazing things, and I'm excited. Anyway, uh, what were you talking about, Chad Ochocinco? Chad Ochocinco just did the makeup for, I want to say one of his daughters. And I also not? He's his got daughter. a shit ton of daughters. Have you ever heard like the the this kind of, not, it's not a conspiracy, but it's basically like saying that the, for men, oh, I hope that doesn't come on camera with my busted up finger because um, that's not his daughter but who is that no i'm not sure but um <laughs> they were basically saying that the with for men you could tell how much of a hoe a man was by how many daughters he has and then i was like wow my dad had three daughters like he was three a of us i always my dad say was a hoe. don't say that i'm sorry he could have been respectfully respectfully he could have been i my true belief is if you have children and your first child is a daughter as a man you were in the streets that's just i'm sticking to it it's been proven time and time again i kind of believe that if your first child's a daughter this is where it's time to repent well my my dad's first child was not a daughter it was a son well, there you so go. my brother my oldest brother so there you uh, go oldest maybe brother, he my wasn't brother, i only have one but yeah but then he had three girls back to back so yeah. i don't know what was my dad doing i don't know i can't ask him now i don't know i do i did not realize he had so many daughters oh yeah Charlemagne the guy got four daughters uh, well he's out yeah definitely for sure yeah how many daughters does DJ Envy? No. Oh, I was gonna say he Nick has Nick Cannon have. Ooh, that I what's don't his know. batting average on that? Let's I don't see. know. Let's I don't know. But Ch- Chad Ochocinco was in. I'll look at it while you're the shade seeing. room again because he did one of his, I think, daughters makeup. Um, and it was really good. I love Chad. Ochocinco's, I was pleasantly uh, surprised at that. I love his social media relationship, like with his what he displays on social media uh-huh. about his relationships with his daughters. Um, I think it's amazing. The caption, I think his caption was something like, hair makeup by me after watching YouTube tutorials, eliminating one expense at a time. And she kind of slayed. Oh, the, it's reporting that he only has two daughters. What? He's got to have more daughters. Nick Cannon that. has 18 kids, but he only has two daughters. No, he, has, he has 10. So he has, apparently he has a, a Rock her and name Row. is Powerful Queen Cannon. And then no, one, it is not. 
That's what that's what Google is saying. But then the the Monroe, I think that was Mariah um, Carey's yeah, that's daughter. Mariah Carey's daughter. Powerful queen. Can it? That's just too much. Did you hear the, the conspiracy about him as far as like why he's having so many kids? And this is all alleged. I just heard this on TikTok. Hey, we're just here but giving you the information. Apparently, there's there's this conspiracy theory that's going on about Nick Cannon saying that the reason why he's having so many kids is because you know he has lupus allegedly. And I did not know he had lupus. Yeah, allegedly he does. And so you know he's had he struggled with kidney failure in the past and stuff. Uh-huh. And he was on dialysis at one point allegedly, and that he's they, that he knows he's gonna need a kidney transplant at some point and so he's basically building a roster of potential donors some of my sister's keeper shit exactly well exactly. here's so, what i'll say about that which i think is a, i mean it makes sense but it's like legal organ harvesting so that's to speak, true you know i if just it is true. don't know if i'm for or against it for or against what that whole situation like him doing that for that yeah. reason i don't think i'm against it at all i think if you can if you can afford smart. it yeah i mean if if you have a contract with all these women ex- excluding mariah Carey, because i don't think mariah Carey would buy no, that bullshit. he loved her for sure yeah but i think if you do have a, a contract with these women that says hey i need you to give me a baby potentially i may come back for a kidney if you're gonna get your bills paid <laughs> i just spit sorry nick i'm your woman i have as many babies as you want to so i'm saying damn I'm trying to damn. It's a smart hustle. It's not stupid. It's not. It's a very smart hustle if that is true. Well, if you father these children, you're paying for their lives. They're quote unquote indebted to you. I just think you can't have an expectation that he's actually going to physically be there for these kids. No, no, no. no. He's going to financially. financially yes. That, and sometimes that's what you need. Yes. Go get an uncle, a grandfather, a male. Go get your boyfriend. Who gives damn, a Damn. I just get, I guess I've never had or thought of myself as having enough money to do some fuck shit like that. But if you do, you can. If you have money, Damn. I mean, I know people say he should stop having all these kids. Why? Why? If he can afford them, that's true. Like he ain't asking you. God for money. said to sow the seeds. He's not. He still- said, "Be fruitful and multiply." And he's not stealing money from Mississippi welfare recipients. That's true. So, like, Seems Brett like everything's Farvish. on the up and up. He made some good while and out money. Absolutely, producing all that kind of stuff. I mean, he do know with his rap career, so he had to do something else. No, who was it? Fifty Cent who was talking about him being a rapper. I mean, I think everybody talks about everybody on Wild and I talks about him being a rapper. I can't tell you one Nick Cannon song. Jiggalo with a lot of dough. Wasn't that his song? (laughs) That was his song. It was a jiggalo. Why does it sound like you are like in a quartet? It sounds like you're a jiggalo with a lot of dough. I think it was that was his song. Something about jiggalo. I was gonna say Love Don't Cost a Thing, but that was the movie. My that was love. he was. was I like his movies. I liked Love Don't Cost a Thing, and I liked loved Drumline. I love love don't cost a thing and drum line. Anything else he's been in? <laughs> that's all. I that's got. all. I, I think that's wild all. Wild and out were bangers. Pretty much. I mean, you know, yeah. Well, speaking of wild and out, um, there was an issue that happened on wild and out this past week. So everybody knows B Simone, right? If you don't know B Simone, just go look her up. Whatever. She's a social media influencer, whatever that means. Anywho, and because I just hate that term, I just think it's the Why? dumbest thing. It's just influencer? like influencer. What, what are you influencing? Would you rather a social media? What do they call them? Like a lifestyle blogger? I would just say she's a social media personality. That's oh, what you okay. Are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think but B. Simone is, I think, is a comedian by like Wikipedia. Wikipedia page. term. Yes. Okay. So she's, so anyway, I, I, and I like her. I think she's, I think she's great. Anyway, and she's funny. Anywho. <laughs> anyway, so anywho. In, in the news this week, there was some controversy with uh, the show Wildin' Out because uh, R&B singer, I guess she's R&B pop singer, whatever, Danny Lay, who's the, um, um, she's from the, she's from what? Dallas, yeah, she's from Dallas. B. Simone's from Dallas. And so, um, Danny Lay is an RB singer who has a baby with the baby, the rapper, the baby, (laughs) and had a whole bunch of controversy that happened last year where he kicked her out of the house, blah, 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 all that kind of bullshit. On Instagram Live. Right. So, anyway, um, she went on Wild and Out, and it came out in in social media news that um, Danny Lay did not want to do Wild and Out with B. Simone because apparently, allegedly, B. Simone did a diss track on her or some shit like that. And B. Simone lo- abs- is, like, is in love with the baby. And he's been on Wild and Out a few times and she's always spoken out about, oh, she loves him. But you know how you love a rapper and you're just like, oh my God, this yeah. is my husband, even though you know you really probably don't have any interest in him or whatever. So Danny Lay said that um, when it came out, people were like, oh, she's a hater, blah, blah, blah. But then Danny Lay came out and did like a live and she was like, listen. I didn't personally ask for her not to be on the show. 
my team knew that she was on the show and basically asked me if I was comfortable being on the show with her. And I said, well, I'd rather her not. And so they that got back to MTV producers, not MTV, VH1 producers, and they were like, hey, B. Simone, we're going to sit you out on this episode. Now, mind you, B. Simone has been on Wild and Out for the past, like, nine years. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that I think for them as a business standpoint, I think that was the wrong move to do, which was to take or remove B. Uh, B. Simone off of the um, the show just to accommodate one artist. And I think, first of all, Danny Lay is not that famous. Obviously, she's famous. That's what talking it about is her, for me. She's not a, she's it's not a not celebrity. It's not like Ariana Grande was coming on exactly. this shit. And they're like, yes or no. Because that's or Taylor huge. Swift or something exactly. like that. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm like, y'all. Because she's not. I, I'm just looking at. I'm looking at Danny Lay. Like, obviously, she's famous enough for us to talk about it because it was just on the shade room. But anyway, uh, it's I, on the I, shade I can't, room. It's I can't name game. one of her songs. I really can't. Well, my thing is like, it's not like they've had this long-standing huge beef that it's all in the media exactly. and everyone's talking about it. It's just like, oh yeah, you know what I mean. But I just think too that opens up a can of worms for a VH1 because now anybody, first of all, that that it's a that's a comedy show and they're on there to make fun of each other and to have fun. And if you're going to start saying, Oh, well you can pick and choose who gets to be on this cast. You're going to ruin the authenticity of that show. And again, no, if even if they would have told Danny Lay, no, B. Simone is going to be here because B. Simone is a part of the cast. So if you don't want to be a part of it and she's on here, then you take your ass elsewhere. You weren't going to lose a single fan. Because no. nobody, who knows who Danny Lay is? Like I said, like, like she's not like a Beyonce. Beyonce said, Hey, I don't want, you know, uh, Chico being on there or somebody or DC Young Fly then yes you move DC Young Fly out the fucking way because it's Beyonce <laughs> you know what I'm saying because she brings a lot of influence yep. and stuff like that but I was just like it was just really weird but um, but I also get her being like yeah I wouldn't want her on the show but she's not she probably thought it wasn't going anywhere because she was like yeah, I'm she, obviously not going to get someone kicked off the show yeah because she said it because people were making it seem like she got her completely removed from Wild and Out and it wasn't because even B. Simone spoke out about it and she was just like she went on Tamron Hall and she basically said she's like well first of all she's like let me just say this she's like it's the only thing I'm going to say about it she was like yes it is true that she didn't want me to be on the show with her or whatever she was like but we know that she's not that mature so you know I'm just going <laughs> to let her have that she's in a different space and i'm gonna move on with my life because b simone was promoting like her new show on was it bounce tv tv one something she has a new show it's really funny but anyway um but other people from wild and out was you know they obviously stood and i cannot believe wild and out is still uh popping have you seen an episode of it lately i haven't seen an episode since 2010 girl you don't know what you missed that shit is funny really yes do they still do the rap battles yeah that was my favorite part those shits be fun when it comes on vh1 yeah, I have not mm-hmm. seen what well, truly I haven't seen Wild and Out since. You should you should follow them on TikTok. Oh, they that's have a TikTok smart. page and that's, they put a lot of their stuff on there. That's it's very hilarious. Smart on like there. Jess Hilarious is back on there now because when she was on there the fir- the first time, I didn't really think that she found her groove in there mm-hmm. as of yet. But she's hilarious. I mean, she's hilarious all by herself. But she's I think she she's been able to find like her her niche in there. VH1 in used people. to be the shit. It was Wild and Out, Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous. Uh, what was that? Freaking Brett Michaels show. Oh, uh, House of no. House of No. No, that was the Flavor Flav. I was gonna say for the love of Brett, but it wasn't that. Because Tequila, of Tequila, love, Tequila was on Rock there of shit. Love. It was yeah. all like the original reality TV mm-hmm. shows. That's because we didn't have a lot of variety. Now we have too no. many streaming services. Everybody wants to have a streaming. I was like, VH1 had all the good, like had good. They shit. did, and they ran it for twenty four hours. It was amazing. You yeah. never got bored. Damn. Um, but yeah, so that was in the news. The uh, Osbournes was VH1. Yes, they were. They Damn. were the first. They were the pioneers, which is why we've all gone to hell. <laughs> Since then, everybody wants to know what everybody's doing. That's but true. Anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, all right, let's get into what. Are we, anything else before we get into what we're watching? No. All right. Well, what are, what have you been watching? Okay, I just watched Hocus Pocus too. Yeah, yo, a time, a time, a freaking time. So first of all, I don't know if y'all realize, but as I was saying, Hocus Pocus came out twenty nine years ago, which is insane. In freaking insane. I was eleven. But it doesn't even register. Like, the number 29 and the way I feel. Like, I obviously, I know Hocus Pocus came out Eight. a long time ago. 28. Nine. Nine. It came out in 93. I was in the third grade. See? And, like. But I remember but that. does the third grade feel like almost 30 years ago? No. It no, does not. exactly. So, when you I hear that. high school 20 years ago. It still doesn't feel like When that. you hear that number, you're like, there's no way. Yeah, but it even, was. It didn't even exist when it came out. I will say, these are the things I loved about the new one. We love diversity and inclusivity. Right, so like the main character in this one is a young little. I haven't seen it yet, so don't run it. I won't say anything okay. crazy, but the I won't even tell you the plot. But yeah. the main characters are obviously the three witches: Bette Midler, mm-hmm. um, 
Sarah, Sarah Jessica, Jessica Parker, Parker and, and Kathy and Jimmy. Yes. But then, you know, the kids, in terms of that, it's like one little black girl, a Hispanic mm-hmm. girl, a white girl. Oh, that's awesome. We love that. There's more color in this one. It's set in present day mm-hmm. Salem. Um, I thought it was really cute. They I still look the same. They though, still, too, they look, Sarah Jessica Parker looks a little older. Oh, she definitely does. She she's, older. yeah, she's gotten fillers and stuff. Um, but allegedly, I thought it was cute. It was good. I wasn't let down by it. Nothing's ever going to feel like the original one oh, for yeah. sure, but yeah. it was a fun little time. It's so weird seeing them play this role in present day because mm-hmm. like, you're so used to it being the 90s. Yeah. Um, so it was should... a, it was a it was a valid like reboot of it because like, you know how they like to do a lot of reboots of stuff and you're just like oh it just falls flat yeah but so that this was a good one yeah so like I won't ruin anything for you but I didn't see any like I didn't know the premise of it I didn't know anything but mm-hmm. it's basically just like this they kind of show the beginning like before they became the Sanderson sister mm-hmm. which is what happened like a oh, long okay. time ago okay and then it flash forwards to present today they come mm-hmm. back and what happens gotcha um, okay that's cool and it was cute I would watch it it's spoopy. That's cool. Yeah. Anything else you've been watching? You said uh, you started. Uh, I saw the first episode of Dahmer. It's taken me some time. I love, listen, love a serial killer. Love a sociopath, a psychopath. That's all me. Let me just tell you this. If you ever try to kill me, bitch, I'll kill you. <laughs> I just want to put that on tape right now. Because she, she, all these murder podcasts no, you listen to. No, 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 no. I'm a perfect, like, victim. I would never be. <laughs> <laughs> murder you could never be the murderer but the victim, like i am the perfect person to be gaslit manipulated just fucking go with the flow by a sociopathic killer but i'm not i have no energy i have no time and i don't have the freaking i don't have you can't concentrate enough i can't concentrate enough to kill somebody i take my statements back i take it back thank you i won't kill you i just have always been obsessed with them because i'm like this shit is so interesting because to look to me to look at someone and be like I want to fucking murder you and this is how I want to do it and I can't wait. That's insane. It, I think it's one thing to just say, oh my God, I wish you would just drop off the face of the earth. Right. But not to plot it out like, yes. okay, on Thursday yes. at 3.30, I'm going to do this. It's like, whoa, that, that yeah. took it too far. Like, that shit is just, all, like, I have that morbid curiosity. I'm like, yeah. why does your brain think that way? But do you know how much way? strength you have to have to cut people up? Do you know how much mental strength you have to have to not cut people up? I mean, I, I think it's pretty simple to not want to Cut See, people up. I don't to you keep, and me, it is, but right to now. these people, it takes all of their energy every day to not do something fucked up. Well, because they're sociopaths. I know, but also, yes, it does take a lot of strength to cut someone up. That's why when people say they chop people up into pieces, I'm like, how? Like, am I thinking? But you did that, and then you cooked them, and then you took a sandwich to your black neighbor. What yeah. the? I mean, this was in the the seventies, eighties. Mm-hmm. I think Actually, it was in the eighties. It was in the. 80s 90s yeah well, yeah, i think it was in the 80s but um, i I don't, i'm not gonna watch it only because um i'm not gonna support bullshit like that and because he killed, killed so many black people but anyway i did watch the clips of niecy nash because i think niecy nash is an absolutely amazing actress in everything she touches i have not seen one flap yet my f- flop yet my um favorite character of hers all-time Klaus. favorite who oh no 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 Klaus was good too but read on 911 oh god i forgot about that she's good hilarious but anyway um i've only watched this first episode all all i was gonna say is my kind of serial killer shit is on the back end where it's like other people taking a look at what happened Mm -hmm. or like trying to dissect it digest it scientifically Mm -hmm. i like that kind of shit this is very much like actual not actual footage of him but like replaying the actual things that yeah. happened from the first episode that i've seen and that skews me out and it's taken me a couple times to get mm-hmm. through the first episode yeah but everyone's saying it's it's the highest streamed show on netflix since squid, squid games Game. i think yeah. it's higher than squid games which is insane i think because the actor who i think because he's such a notorious serial killer and yes and also the guy who plays him what is his name? Evan oh, yeah. Peters. Yes. He p- is plays creepy perfectly. Mm-hmm. Everything he does, I'm like, that is insane. Yeah. Did you? He was in Pose. Do you remember when he was the guy in Pose? Mm-hmm. Man. He's a great actor. He is. But I'm still, I'm still not gonna watch no, it. No, and don't. I don't think you should, especially if you're not in that shit. There's no point no. in watching it. it was I mean, awful. I like like true crime stuff, but more so like snapped. Like, yeah. Because I'm, I mean, how many in the grand scheme of things, how many female serial killers have there actually? Been? Not a lot. Maybe like a. I would probably but say less know, than five. You know why? I think personally is because men like the most serial killers get ki- 
get caught because they start snowballing out of control. Yeah. They can't stop it. Mm-hmm. Women are better about like keeping it fucking together. Well, that's why I say women are better cheaters than men. Yeah. Like women can be like, they mm-hmm. have a better cooling off period because yeah. the male serial killers, their cooling off period gets shorter and shorter and they and can't they keep more. their regular life together. Yeah. And women can because we're fucking amazing. Yeah. Um, but all that to say, I have started saw, watching Dahmer. I yes. saw um, the movie Lou that we talked about last week with I've uh, seen Journey that Smollett. Now. Or not, and, I've not um, seen it, but yeah, it was it was actually really good. It was a good twist, like plot twist at the very end. You didn't see it coming, but um, it was really good. Is that really apocalyptic? No, not at all. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's basically she's um, there's this. Uh, and I'm not giving anything away. This is like literally the the preview. Um, Journey Smollett has a daughter. Um, and they live out like in this little country area, whatever. And Lou is basically this older white woman who lives in the woods and stuff. And so she just kind of keeps to herself. But there's this mystery about her. You don't know what she does, why she knows what she knows. And there's this big storm that comes. Well, then somebody comes and kidnaps Journey's daughter. Mm-hmm. And so Lou is trying to help her get her back. But oh. the person who kidnaps her, they, there's um, they take you through the wilds of like how they're all like connected and something like that. And oh, that's kind of cool. And it, so she's and she goes with her because she finds out who Lou actually is and why she knows all this stuff. And you know, just those people who live in the mountains and live in like off grid, like they learn a lot. Of, shit. Yeah, they learn a lot of shit. But it's not. It, there's nothing scary about it at all. Well, that sounds good. I didn't yeah. know what it was, but now I'm interested. Yeah, I think um also too, uh, Kiki Palmer actually just announced that she is coming out with her own network. It's going to be called Key TV, and I'm excited for. Keyed up. Okay. Key TV. Key t- Kiki. A Kiki. Okay. Key TV. That's cute. Anyway. I would love a Kiki Palmer channel. I would also love a Kiki Palmer variety segment. Like, um, what was that show? What did Issa Rae do it? What? Shit. On HBO with all the black black women comedy show. Black ladies comedy show. Did you ever the watch black that? Black lady sketch comedy show? Black lady That was Robin sketch. Thede. Robin Thede. Mm-hmm. I would also love to see... Quinta Brunson was on there, Kiki, too. Yeah, I would love to see Kiki Palmer do something like that. I bet she'd be fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, but I don't... But the way she was talking about it was not like it's going to be like 24 hours of Kiki Palmer. It was just mm-hmm. like she's starting a network and going to probably give other like people... Like own shit? Yeah, give other people an opportunity to, to have their stuff um, on there. But now, damn it, now it's going to be another streaming service. God. I know. Did you watch Queen Sugar? Um, No, I did not. Okay. I haven't watched that. That yet. was one of the Oprah shows that I was like, "Damn, this is." Good. Isn't it still on? Because that was directed yeah, by Ava DuVernay, on. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't gotten into it just Love yet. Love me just some Kofi Cerebe. Love me some Bianca Lawson. Oh yeah, because she was in um, what was the show? Uh, where she was a vampire. Shit, and her mom with uh, what's his name? True Blood. True, True Blood. Blood. Yes, yes, yes. With uh, what with was... that lady with the, the no, the waiter, the guy who um was like the AIDS burger. Um, AIDS oh, burger. Shit, what was his name? As he died though, um, in real life, um. God damn it. What was his name? I'm thinking of the girl from True Blood. That's who I always think of. The Anna Paquin. Him, him, him. The black guy. Uh, what was his name on the mm. show? La- Lafayette. 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 He was hilarious That was a show. good show. But he died in real life, though. I don't oh, know no. why he died, but he died in real Let life. Let me tell you. HBO can do no wrong. Yeah, he punched that dude in the face. He's my... Uh, you want an AIDS burger? He said, my, my my burger comes with ketchup, mustard, mayo, and AIDS. And he beat the shit out of them dudes. Oh, he, had, he was struggling with drug and alcohol abuse. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Oh, that sucks. He was attempting to withdraw from alcohol on his own. Oh. And that's when he died. He was, he was a great uh, actor, though. But yeah, that that show was funny. I mean, I'm still watching House of the Dragon, which I think you should watch. Um. Yeah, I, I have. That's it's a on no. The list. No, no, no. It's on, it's the, on list. the list. Well, because I started Game of Thrones, I just I need to finish. I want to finish Game of Thrones first before I start it. Okay, that's fair. I, the good thing about House of the Dragon, I think, is a you don't have to watch Game of Thrones yes. to watch it, and b there's only like three or four episodes, so it's more okay. It's more palatable. Oh, they're giving it once a week. Once a week. Okay. Yeah, just like okay. the other one, but it's just not. I mean, Game of Thrones is what like seven, six, seven seasons. Yeah, it's just a lot. I mean, I got through Stranger Things in like two weeks. That's true. So, That's yeah. true. Well, yeah, watch Game of Thrones. This show was yeah. it's great. Cool bean. Anything else before we go into the rehab corner? Nope. I got. I have nothing. Nothing. All right. So in the rehab corner, uh, we're talking about concussions today. Oy vey. And CTE. Okay, and the reason why we're talking about that is because of a particular issue that happened um, this past week in, what was it, Monday Night Football? Sunday Night Football? What, football, the NFL. It had to be Monday Night Football. I think it was Monday. Um, so basically what happened is um, uh, this particular quarterback Tua who plays Ta- for, I, can I was, I was not going to try to pronounce his last name because I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but his name is Tua. He plays for the Miami Dolphins. And um, he's a quarterback. And so last week, last week, 
he ended up getting like a little, I guess, a mild concussion, right? He got hit and he kind of stumbled a little bit once he got up. Then they didn't, they supposedly and allegedly followed their concussion protocol, but seems like they didn't. So basically what happened was last week he ended up getting hit yet again. Oh, and when he got hit, he immediately had a spinal response, which we basically call like either decorticate or decerebrate where you basically either draw up and you flex or you draw into your body or you basically extend and go outward towards your body. Basically something happened with this boy's spinal cord and his brain, which, you know, anyway, his central nervous system, I'll just say that. And, um, and mind you, these are responses we see with like spinal cord injury, patients. spinal cord injury and in patients where your brain is like, we've got to go back to the very beginning. That's yes. all we know how to do right now. So we're going to curl up on each other or we're going to flex it all the way. Right. Up. It's not good. No. Whenever you see that in a patient, you're like, this shit is not and good. This, uh, specifically, his fingers were just like really just rigid and just like he had no like control over his over his body and whatnot. And so apparently they're going through that and people were just really, really concerned about it because again, the, the, because of this, all the CTE stuff, which is, um, that, that has come out and the research that has come out about it, people are like, okay, the NFL's concussion protocols have gotten more rigid, which is a good thing, right? For the protection of the concussion. Yes. Less concussion since they've, and they basically, what they do is with the concussion protocol, they just keep you out of the game longer. So you mm-hmm. can't just come back the next week and say, Oh, I'm good. I don't, you know, I don't have any sensitivity to light. I don't have this. I don't have headaches. I don't have, yeah. you know, vivid um, dream, blah, 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 all kind of bullshit. All the symptoms that come with concussions. And their big thing was they're called, they're supposed to call in an, an outside neurologist yes. who was not Hey, not on staff, but is still hired through the NFL, right. who has to also clear you. And it doesn't matter what everyone else says, that neurologist has to clear yes. you. To so play it's again. more steps and more third party people coming into it versus their own. Because, of course, their own can say, oh, yeah, he's clear, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. So I pray that he's. Have you heard any updates on him? I think he was released from the hospital. My thing is, in the game before this last one, right, where shit really got fucked mm-hmm. up, that was when he first got hit. Yeah. And he stood up and couldn't walk. Right. He right. kind of stumbled a little he bit. He kind of stumbled. And. Mm-hmm. To my knowledge, when that happens now with all this new concussion stuff, as soon as you have, quote, loss of motor control Mm -hmm. after a hit, you're supposed to be out. Well, he went off. They said it was just a back injury. He tweaked Mm -hmm. something. That's why they couldn't walk, and he let him back in. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that? There's no way. Yeah. I just think as as therapists, and the thing is, my career has been mostly in the ICU and mostly in the hospital. However, when I was on clinicals, um, I did two outpatient rotations. And so in outpatient, you see these young kids that come in, spinal cord injuries. They come in following propo- uh, uh, concussion protocol. Even when I was in college, when I was in PT school, uh, my professor, uh, Dr. Bell, rest his soul, he was the um, like the athletic trainer basically for the FAMU DRS school, which is like the high school attached to FAMU. Mm-hmm. And he would um, – we, he would use us to go out there and wrap them and basically be the athletic trainers for the football games and stuff like that um, because this school couldn't afford all that extra stuff. So anyway, it was it was experience for us. And I remember this one particular night we were out there in a game and this one kid got hit so hard. Oh, my God, he got hit so hard. When he got hit, he just laid there. So, of course, all of us immediately rush on the field. We run. And we're just like, are you okay? Are you okay? And so he's just looking around and we're like, yo, do you know where you are? Like, what's your name? And we're going through like the questions and stuff. This kid just tries to pop up. I wish we could have recorded that shit. He just popped up off the ground. And then we were like, yo, yo, yo. So of course we're running after him on the field in a live game. Like, wait, 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 wait. And then he falls down to the ground again. And we're like, oh my God. He got so pissed at the coaches. It was like, just let me fucking play. Let me fucking play. We were like, do you want to live? Like you fucking idiot. But he's not an idiot. It's just, he's a kid. He doesn't know any better. He wants to play. And you know, these coaches, unfortunately, it's like you, you sentence these people to death. Like you just really do. Yeah. What are you looking up? I was just saying what they, I mean, and the NFL says a lot of shit, but they expect him to be interviewed Monday about what's going on. So I think he was released from the hospital. I just think from publicity standpoint, just keep him out two more games. Dolphins, y'all ain't going to win nothing. I'm okay? just like, sir, you're, so, tw- and like, again, you are, he was, he played at Alabama, right? Your career is on an upswing. You're from, I just watched the Monte, the Manti Teo documentary. So I know if you're from Hawaii, it's like God family football. This is your whole life. Oh, he's, Pacific Islander. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, but they, you're they 24 years old. Mm-hmm. That's your whole life yeah. ahead of you. You see, you got one brain. The Dolphins ain't gonna win the Super Bowl anyway. And even if they listen, do, no one ever thought they were. No, y'all ain't gonna even make it to the playoffs. So we already. So that's. So take some time. Yeah, for real. You can take that's, the whole season off and still come back. Official NFL opinion. 
Absolutely. The Dolphins suck. They make should start checking can, in every week about Williams. the NFL. We'll tell you what's up. Yeah, pretty, from our perspective from as our therapists. Perspective. But, yeah, I just hate seeing injuries like that because those are never really good. And that's one of the – like, I <clears> – excuse me. I have two um, former uh, – Classmates from PT school that actually are physical therapists in the NFL. Oh, that's cool. Um, no, I don't like either one of them. Anyway, <laughs> but um, you guys then. pretty much, yeah, I just don't like them. Anyway, didn't like them in PT school and don't like them in real life now. Isn't that so fun? How I, that but I, I think that's amazing for their careers, though. I think like yeah. them having ties to those teams, I think is amazing and being able to use their their level of expertise to work in that particular field. I think that's a lot of people, a lot of physical therapists dream to actually work there. Yeah. It's not one of mine because I don't like ortho, but. Um, them, I'm quite sure that they, those men have, have seen quite a bit. But, I mean, when you're a physical therapist in the in the NFL, on the grand scheme of things, nobody gives a fuck about your opinion. That's true. Fix well, these bitches and put them back on well, the field. Well, that's what you I'm what saying, I mean? because now they're turning it all on this neurologist, right? They are yes. saying, like, um, this it's everywhere. This neurologist that was not associated with the team. Mm -hmm. da, 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 he was not associated. He's been released. You think this man who comes in and is being paid all this money by the NFL, you think that Anything he says is going to change y'all's opinion. Yeah, for real. If y'all say he needs to get back in the game, that man's going to be like, well, it could be this and it could be that, but I can't say for sure, so he's you probably know, okay. You know who they need to hire? The neurologist at the hospital you work at, who we know and love. Um, a man of the people. He'll be like, listen, I don't give a fuck about your money, bitch. He'd literally sit you down and he'd be like, I'm going to tell you like I tell my own son. You're going to die. Your ass is not going back in that You're fucking not game. Going in the game. No, you don't need to. You know, I was talking to someone. There's, there's no neurologist in San Antonio. The wait list for a neurologist is like six months. Really? Where are the neurologists? Are they retired? There's just, and I heard that doctor talking about it because someone was looking for a new <laughs> neurologist. And he was like, uh -huh. you know, like we're always looking for more. We just don't have as much as we need. And then I had another patient the next week who was having progressive weakness. Mm. And they said, you need to see a, a neurologist here. Yeah. And they called and they said, okay, we'll see. This was last month, he called, September. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, well, we can get you in in March. So is it the neurologist and the neurosurgeons or just the neurologist? I think it's the neurologist. Really? Um, I haven't heard about neurosurgery. So basically you're having to come into the hospital and get admitted mm -hmm. because you're like, if I don't, there's no one to see for six months. Yeah, With crazy. progressive weakness, which is scary because you Man. know it can go from zero to 100 like that. Like overnight. Um, Literally. But I was just like, that is crazy. So if you're listening and you've ever thought about going to med school and becoming a neurologist and you're a good person... <laughs> Come to San Antonio. No, here's the thing. Med school needs to be free so that you can get more neurologists. Because I'm quite sure there's a lot of people out there that want to go to med school, but they don't have $400,000 to pay for it. And then you have states like fucking Iowa and Kansas that's over here trying to sue the president for giving out free loan money. I mean, free forgiveness. Free for loan. I wish we had grants. Yeah, I wish. I mean, I had a couple. It should but. be that if you go to college and you pass your classes, it's free. Yes. Damn it. I agree. Like, I'm here. This is my job. I'm working hard. It should be free. For real. I mean, I finished. That's enough. Or there it. should be some kind of program. Like, if you graduate with these certain degrees, if you work for, how, like, th two years, it's all forgiven. Yeah, I think every... I don't care what degree you get. I don't care if it's a degree in liberal arts. It should be paid off. Period. As long as you finish. Well, that's how it is in other countries. That it's like, you know, you if go you to can for free. If you can afford to give Ukraine $13 million, okay... If you, you can, can afford, afford to. to print six billion dollars to get us out of this pandemic COVID bullshit we were in, that you're now having to backpedal because we have too much money circulating, you can make college free. Did you see that Joe Biden was like, "Oh yeah, the pandemic's over." I was like, "Joe, who's your PR? Stop talking. Stop saying Hire me as your PR. Like Jesus, just stop. T stop talking. Stop talking. Anyway, anything else we need to talk about before we get out of here? No. Oh, well, well. Segwaying back to the rehab corner subject about concussions, parents, please be diligent with your children. Please talk to your children and give your children other options other than just sports in order to get out of the situation that they're in. I know that they love to play and I know it's, it's fascinating and it's fun and all that kind of stuff, but you have to be the first line of defense for your children, period. Obviously this grown man, that's a totally different situation, that's true. but for parents who are putting their kids in pop Warner and in little league football and baseball and all these other contact sports. Well, baseball is not a contact sport; it's not supposed to, but sometimes it is. But all these contact sports, just please be diligent and be mindful to protect your children's heads, please. Or at they least can, push them towards sports with guaranteed contracts. No, not even that, because they're going to be thirty-five years old with double hip replacements and knee replacements and been walking on canes. But the money's paid out. So, but yeah, but that's you, there's no quality of life, and that's part of the problem. So just. 
Non-contact sports if you can. Just don't put your kids in football. <laughs> That's what we're saying. This is Texas, ma'am. That's not going to happen. And I mean, Florida's the same way. It's a big Florida is a huge uh, football state. But anyway, neither here nor there. Um, we love football. Come get them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a plot. I took a bunch of guns, but yeah. Um, but yeah, anything else you need to talk about before we get out of here? No. You know what, everybody? I'm going to put some positive vibes out there. Mercury has gone direct. No more retrograde. We're going to our, fill ourselves with the fresh, positive air and just be the light we want to see in the world. The power of Christ compels you. That's Amen, what I you sister. Say. Amen, sister. I'm filled with Christ's love. I, <laughs> I say that all the time. I'm so glad you fucking said that. I love that movie. <laughs> I'm filled with Christ's love. God, it's so good. <laughs> all right, y'all. This is going to be an amazing week. I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in, in my, my bones. Fingers. I feel it in my toes. <laughs> It can't be worse than last week. Okay, don't say stuff like that. Sorry. You just ruined it. I take it back. Thank you. It's going to be an amazing week, you guys. I can feel it in my bones. Y'all go out and y'all have an amazing week. Don't forget to spread love. Spread light. And, and don't, don't forget, forget to, to laugh, laugh your, your face, face off. off. Did you guys enjoy this episode? If so, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, including TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at the Face Off Pod. New episodes are released every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.